boys' first match, it's tough to indicate anything, but, you know, I'm happy to be through. I definitely still have a chance because now there's only 64 left. Um, they can say what they want. I'm, I'm the type of player I am. I've won a lot of tournaments. I'm number one in the world. And of course, I can still improve. There's a lot of things to my game I can still improve, but everyone can. And, uh, you know, I'm on the right track. And I just got there and I play the way I do. And, uh, you know, hopefully that's good enough. Carolyn, you seem very comfortable attacking today. Were you, is it part of your strategy now to try to set up your, yourself for an attack, or is it just taking advantage of a particularly good situation? Well, I usually um, play the way I I need to to win a match, and uh, and you know I um, I went in today. It was important for me to to serve well, and I thought I um, I started quite a few good points with my serve, and and you know it was uh, she's not a very tall player, so I tried to open up the court a little bit more, and and then tried to take advantage of the short ball, the short balls I got. Caroline, do you think it's fair to say that at times this summer you went a little bit away from your pace? try to improve too fast in matches and maybe that's why you took some losses you usually wouldn't take? Um, I think I'm a, I'm a player that likes to play matches and I always play better once I've got in that match mode. And um, yeah, I've gotten a couple of losses but that's what happens and I tried a few things that didn't work out but you know, I, uh, I came back last week and, and won in New Haven which is was a great feeling and to win a tournament four times in a row is, is something special. and. I can't believe that I've been there four times already. <laughs> I'm 21 years old and I already feel like I'm a senior on tour. <laughs> so how did you get yourself comfortable again last week? Well, I just, um, again, like you said, I went to my base and I, I know that I've, I've worked on some things and I, uh, and I did those. But again, I, I know what kind of player I am and I am not going to change the way I play, but I'm going to add a few things to it like I always did and uh, you know I felt very comfortable last week it's always nice to come back to a tournament that you've won before and a tournament where you feel at home so last week was was a good preparation for me what mistakes did you what mistakes did you make did you feel in those um, to take those losses what did you try and change that didn't really work out or what did you do wrong well I just did made way too many unforced errors that I usually don't do and uh, if you look at the stats I think they tell they say it all and you know um, again I, I always play better when I've gotten a few matches and get into that match mode. It's different to play uh, just practice sets or, you know, you make a mistake, okay. You know, you don't really feel that importance of some key moments, uh, but you get those when, when you play matches. I understand you're friendly with the golfer Rory McIlroy. You won Golf's U.S. Open. Has he kind of had a little fun with you about daring you to win this U.S. Open? <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, I'm definitely trying to keep up. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll definitely do my best, but I still have six tough matches to go, so it will not be easy. And, you know, um, he has something I'm, I'm looking for. I have something he's looking for. He wants to be number one, so uh, so it's good to have something on each other. Could you describe the difference playing on Arthur Ashe, atmosphere-wise and even conditioning-wise, in the day versus the night? It's a huge difference. Um, during the day, I feel... Um, it's a, you feel the court is huge, and you feel that there's fire to the sides, and also, I don't know, I, uh, the balls are flying a bit more, but that's normal. That's on every every court. The the balls are flying more when it's hot in the evening. It feels more compact because you can't see the upper stands when it's dark, and um, well, it's it's both <coughs> two special feelings, and it's great to be out there. And I'm I'm happy that I got to play, and and hopefully my next match will be there as well. So what's your confidence level now? I mean, is it high coming off of New Haven, or do you, do you look back at the summer and say, not so high? No, I mean, why shouldn't it be high? I'm number one still, and I have just won a tournament, so I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling good. And, I mean, <laughs> again, I lost two matches. That's what happens. And, uh, you know, I, I just won uh, four in a row, so this is my fifth one, so I'm feeling okay. Is there any time in terms of being number one just feels no, it's definitely an honor, and it's a dream for me to be there. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to stay up there as long as possible. And, 
doesn't really matter what people are saying. Uh, no one can ever take that away from me. I'm number one in the world. I've been there for 46 Six. weeks. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a great achievement. Though. So, d despite not winning a major at this point and only reaching the world final here two years ago, you're satisfied with what you've done to be number one? Of course. I mean, I've won six tournaments this year already, and uh, you know, I should definitely not be complaining. I'm, uh, I'm in a good position. I'm in a good spot. I'm happy. I'm healthy, and I can go out there and compete. And that's what's most important. And I'm winning a lot of matches, which is, which is why we, we practice. We practice to win. And uh, yeah, I've won a lot of matches, and that's what's satisfying. Are you sometimes <laughs> amused by all this going on, as though you didn't know how to play tennis? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, it's actually been nice the last three, four weeks because I haven't gotten any questions about number one. So, uh, you know, the now I, I know that I'm back on track and it's, you know, it's, I know that everyone has to write their stories, but I think it's, uh, we should move on, ask about something else, something uh, more interesting. And, yeah, any, you know, any confessions of something else we should know about? <laughs> Um, no, there's not been any kangaroos here, so uh, maybe I'll find something else. <laughs> yeah, there, was, there was some talk during the French Open that uh, you were considering hiring Martina Navratilova to be your coach. Uh, have there been any developments in this area of your game? Yeah, I was thinking about it at one point, and we talked and, uh, and everything, but there were a few things that didn't work out and, uh, as well in the scheduling, but uh, maybe in the future. Well, among other things, she would have been uh, one of the few female tennis coaches on the women's tour. Do you think, uh, why do you think there are so few female tennis coaches on the WTA tour? It's difficult to say. I think there's a lot of different reasons. I think, uh, first of all, there's a lot of coaches who are, have been good players as well, and a top 200 guy, top 300 guy is a good hitting partner as well, so he can both be on court and, and, and play, but also he can be coaching, whereas to get, you know, the right, I don't know, uh, to, to have two and one in the women's is, is a bit more difficult, especially because a lot of the top women don't want to be coaches afterwards, and uh, they want to do something different. And also, I think, you know, women start having families. They want to be with their kids. They it's, it's a little bit different, I think. So, Caroline, where do things stand with you on the coaching front now, and how, um, how settled are you here? I'm settled. I, uh, I like the way I have uh, everything now, and, um, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm happy about things around my team. I'm happy about the way I'm, I'm playing, how I, everything is right now. So I can, I can just focus on the things on court. Caroline, it's not that common, though, for a top player to hire a mystery coach who's kind of in the background. So just talk about that from your perspective, because it is a little strange for you as number one to make a major hire and basically no one except you and your team know who it is. Yeah, well, um, it's I have to respect the. Uh, him as well. So I mean, if he wants to be in the background and not have his name out, that I have to respect that. So so that's mainly why. So have you, have you gotten any advice from him in the last week or two? I understand he's watching video. Are you talking to him? Or? Yeah, I, I have, and uh, you know, even yesterday, and and you know, just uh, he's been watching me play and and telling me a few things, and and it's good. It's working well. Uh, being at Yale last week and you know being a 21 year old, do you ever think about taking college classes or going to a university? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it felt good being there. I think that's one of the reasons why I play well as well. There's a lot of young people around, a lot of things going on, and it's nice to see them move into their dorms with their mattresses. <laughs> and you know, it's definitely a, a cool feeling, and it feels like you're a part of it actually that week you're there. And uh, definitely, you know, but it wouldn't be the same to do like to do a few classes, then it wouldn't be the same as to go there and actually live there. So uh, definitely just to uh, keep developing my brain, <laughs> that would be good. But but you, I wouldn't have time to actually live there, unfortunately. Thanks very much, everyone.